I feel like slow cookers definitely have a reputation for kind of the cozier wintertime meals, but I find that I use my slow cooker crock pot, whatever you want to call it. I use it just as much in the summer as I do the winter. I love it to help keep my house cool when it gets super hot out. And I also find that slow cooker meals are usually easier and it just allows me to be able to spend more time outside. If we haven't met before, my name is Ange. Welcome. And this is the Menu Made Kitchen. Okay, so this first recipe is a slow cooker Greek chicken, and I am telling you, this could not be any easier to put together, and it has so much flavor. It's probably some of the best slow cooker chicken I've ever had. It's really versatile. You can put it on top of or in so many different things. It's perfect for summertime because it's zesty and bright. I think you're really gonna enjoy this recipe. All right, so for our slow cooker Greek chicken, we have to start by making our really simple Greek yogurt sauce. So I'm gonna add, actually I'm gonna dump out some of this liquid. So I'm gonna add about a cup of this full fat Greek yogurt or whole milk of Greek yogurt here to my dish. I'm just gonna eyeball this, about a cup. And then I'm gonna grate in one garlic clove. Now the recipes that I have found online, they add anywhere from two to four garlic cloves. And I love garlic, but I have to definitely be careful with it because it can kind of mess with my tummy if I do too much of it. So I'm just gonna do one clove in the sauce because we are gonna reserve some of the sauce for um, topping it in our little pita pockets that we're gonna make a little bit later. I'm gonna get that fresh garlic off there. And then I'm also gonna zest in about one teaspoon of lemon zest, kind of a classic Greek flavor, that real kind of zesty, citrusy note to it. I think it'll be really good. And then I'm gonna add in this entire lemon juice. You're gonna want about two tablespoons. And then we're gonna add in one teaspoon of salt. We gotta make sure that this is well seasoned. And I'm gonna kinda do a heaping teaspoon of salt. All right, that is it for the sauce. I'm gonna get this mixed up here. And because I really do like the garlic flavor, I am gonna add one more clove, but I'm gonna actually put this in the slow cooker with the chicken so it cooks down with the chicken. Um, but in terms of like the raw garlic, I'm, I just did that one little clove. All right, that looks perfect, so let's move over to the slow cooker. Okay, I have my large slow cooker here and I'm gonna add four of these chicken breasts. Now, these were two really large chicken breasts and I just sliced them in half to make four. So you're gonna want about a pound and a half of chicken breasts, or you can do chicken thighs. Okay, and then like I said, I am gonna add this one minced garlic clove just to give it a little more garlicky flavor. And then we're gonna do about one cup, or I'm sorry, a third a cup of this yogurt sauce over the chicken. And this will just give it awesome flavor and tenderize it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna mix this around, making sure all the chicken is coated. Flip it over. The way that I'm gonna serve this is we're gonna put this in little pita pockets, but this is so versatile, you could put this chicken, shredded chicken over rice, over salads. It's a nice chicken to have on hand for meal preps, but I think it'll be really fun in the pitas, and it just kind of is more of a summery, light meal. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna cover this and we're gonna cook it on high for about three or four hours, really until the chicken is can easily shred with a fork. Okay, our chicken is done. It's been cooking about four hours. I'm gonna transfer it to this plate here. It smells really good. Definitely has that lemony scent to it. All right, and I do have some liquid left in my slow cooker. I'm gonna get rid of all of it except for like a quarter cup. And then I'm gonna get my chicken shredded up. We'll add it back to our slow cooker here. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit more sauce, top it with some lemon slices. And then I'm gonna show you how we serve this. Okay, how yummy does this look? It smells so fresh. So like I mentioned before, you can definitely put the chicken over rice or over a salad. 
I really wanted to make these pita breads and what I have for the pita bread is I just used the papapillas. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, papapita. And this is a whole wheat. They have regular white ones. They have other pita breads in the store that you can use where you can like stuff it in the pocket. But this was just easy to fold it over like a taco. And I put some cucumber, some tomato, red onion, and then a little bit more of that yogurt sauce that we had left over. Wow, that yogurt sauce is phenomenal. It's such a simple recipe. I feel like there's not, there wasn't a lot of ingredients that went into the chicken to like make it flavorful, but it's very lemony in that kind of tang from the yogurt sauce. I think that this is so delicious. What a fun, like light summery lunch or dinner. It will just be perfect. All right, so for our slow cooker Mexican beef, we gotta start with seasoning our beef and I have a chuck roast here. This is about three pounds. I cut it up into, you know, smaller squares just so it cooks a little better. And then I did trim off a lot of the fat, but there's still a little bit marbled through, which will just give it that much more flavor. And then we have a ton of spices. So I'm not gonna read off the measurements of these. You can definitely find them on my website, but it has things like chili powder, cumin, salt, pepper, oregano, smoked paprika. And then I also use a spice called sumac and it's real citrusy. It's so delicious and I think it'll be really good mixed in with the rest of the seasonings. So I'm just gonna stir up these seasonings so they're all mixed together and I'm gonna coat the beef on both sides with all of these spices. And then we're gonna head over to the slow cooker. my six quart slow cooker here and I'm going to add in one medium onion that I've sliced up and then I'm also going to add in two tablespoons of tomato paste. Just going to kind of eyeball this and I'll give this a light stir. It doesn't have to be fully combined. Just want to make sure that the onions are coated with the tomato paste. And then we're going to add in our seasoned beef. Now if you want to take the time to sear the beef first, that would give it some great flavor, but we're trying to keep this really easy. Summer recipes, not heating up the house, and it will still be delicious even if you don't take the time to sear it. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of beef broth over the top here. This will just help keep some of that moisture in there. I used the Better Than Bouillon, which is why it's still at the bottom of the bowl here, but it is my favorite. It's so flavorful. I use the chicken one too. Okay. All right. That is it. So easy, right? So I'm going to pop the lid on and I'm going to cook this on high for about six or seven hours. You could also do it on low for nine to 10. You just want to make sure that you can shred the beef really easily with a fork. And then I'm going to serve this with some corn tortillas and we're going to make really simple tacos. I think it's going to be so delicious. Okay. It has been six hours and my house smells so delicious right now. So I'm just gonna check this and just make sure that it's real tender. Oh yeah, look at that. Literally is just falling apart. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some tongs and I'm gonna pull these little steak bits out of here. Put them in my little pie dish. And I'm gonna get the beef shredded up there's just a little bit of fat uh, like you saw on some of it. So I'm just going to make sure to pull off the little bits of fat so that that doesn't end up in our meat. But oh my gosh, this is going to melt in our mouth meat. <laughs> this looks so good. And because I took off a lot of the fat before we cooked it, there isn't a lot in the juice. So I don't think I'm even going to skim the top of this or strain the fat off. I'm just gonna add the shredded beef back to the pot and then mix it all together to make sure that our beef has lots of like this good liquid on it because that is where all the flavor's at.
Okay, does this not look so delicious? I just wanna take a fork and dive right into this. But we gotta add one more ingredient and I'm gonna squeeze in one fresh lime. Just add some lime juice to this to give it some freshness and lime juice with all these Mexican spices is gonna be so good. All right, before we taste this, we just gotta talk about this for a second. So what I did was I chopped up some sliced up um, radishes, some red onion and cilantro. Really simple, almost like kind of a street taco. You can definitely do cheese and sour cream and all that stuff, but the highlight of this taco is that meat. So this is how we're gonna serve it tonight and I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lime juice over the top. But like I mentioned earlier, you can serve this beef over rice, you could put it in burritos, make nachos. There are just so many ways to serve this and it makes awesome leftovers. And then I put my corn tortillas in a hot skillet, a dry skillet, and seared them on both sides. I like to have those little char marks on there. Okay, we're gonna give this a try. Oh wow, that is some flavorful meat. It's not spicy, but wow, you could really, really can taste all those spices. It's really rich. Like I feel like that's the best way I can describe it. It's a rich Mexican shredded beef. And I love the simple taco ingredients in there. Radishes are one of my favorite things to put on tacos. It just gives it a really fun crunch. These are so delicious. Well, this meat is really delicious, but these tacos are really good too. I'm super excited for you to try this. All right, so for our lemony chicken chowder, I actually have an insert here from my slow cooker, but you can use a pan and saute your onions that way. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of avocado oil, and then I have a small onion here that I've chopped up into small pieces. I'm also gonna add a pinch of salt. I'm gonna saute the onions until they're softened, and then we're gonna add in a little bit of garlic. All right, now that our onions are softened, I'm gonna add in about one teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm also gonna add in a half a teaspoon of turmeric. And this has kind of an earthy, peppery flavor to it, which is gonna go really good with the chicken. And I like to toast the spice for about 30 seconds. It really brings out the flavor in the soup. All right, I'm gonna get this into my slow cooker and then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so over the top of the onions, I'm gonna add in a couple of large chicken breasts and then I had some chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I have three of them. I'm gonna throw those in. I think the combination of the light and dark meat is gonna be really delicious in this soup, but certainly you can use all chicken breasts or all chicken thighs. And I'm gonna add my seasonings now over the chicken. I'm gonna do about three quarters teaspoon of salt, and I'm also gonna do three quarters teaspoon of pepper. Now we have lots of veggies, which is gonna make this so hearty and delicious. I've got one pound of baby potatoes. These are just the little yellow baby potatoes, and I've quartered most of them. Some of them I cut in half. And then I also have about a half a cup of sliced carrots, and then a half a cup of chopped up celery. And then I have two cups of cauliflower florets. If you can find a small head of cauliflower, that would be perfect. I'm gonna add in two small bay leaves. And then I have four cups of chicken stock. All right, I'm gonna give this a stir and make sure everything is combined as best we can. We're gonna pop the lid on and I'm actually gonna cook this for about four hours on high. You can also do it on low for seven or eight hours, I believe, from what the recipe says. And then we're gonna add in a few more ingredients once everything is cooked, but already, doesn't that look so beautiful and fresh? I think it's such a perfect summer soup to have because you've got all these fresh ingredients. And because this is gonna be kind of lemony, I think lemons and summertime is just the perfect combination. All right, so the lid goes on and we will see you in a little bit. All right, the lemony chicken chowder is pretty much finished cooking. I just need to go in and fish out my chicken pieces because we need to get this these shredded up. So I'll just add them to my plate here. I mean, they're already falling apart. So that is perfect. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll just get this shredded. As I was adjusting my camera, I realized 
I forgot to grab my lemon and this would not be lemony chicken chowder without the lemon juice. So I got to get one of these cut in half and I think I'm just going to use half of this lemon. So to finish all this up, I'm going to add in about a quarter cup of chopped up parsley and then I'm going to start with a, about a tablespoon of fresh dill. I don't want this to be like in your face dill, but I want there to be a little hint of it. Then we're going to add in a quarter cup of full fat coconut milk. You want the full fat because you want it to be nice and creamy. You can also add heavy cream. The recipe says you can do that as well, but I kind of wanted just a lighter, creamier soup. And I feel like coconut milk is perfect for that. And then I'll squeeze in half of this lemon. You'll want about one or two tablespoons. That was a juicy lemon too. All right, and then I'm just gonna stir all this together. So delicious and fresh. I'm gonna remove these bay leaves right now while I can see them. Doesn't that just look so much fun? Like it's a slow cooker full of sunshine. So beautiful. That looks amazing. I am really excited to try this. I wanna make sure to get the perfect bite. I think we think of a chicken soup or chicken stews as something we make in the winter time when it's cold or if you're not feeling well. I always feel like people put their slow cooker away for the winter because it's like, oh, well, that's a winter thing, but it's really not. We still all eat hot meals in the summertime. This is just a much better way to do it because you don't have to fuss with heating up the house. And so this recipe is awesome. It's very fresh, definitely has a lot of meatiness to it and heartiness. So it's filling, but light enough. So, so yummy. Well, I hope you found some inspiration in today's video for some awesome slow cooker summer meals. You'll have to let me know which ones look good to you. And don't forget all the recipe links are in the descriptions. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to be part of my YouTube family. So make sure to subscribe. I hope you have a really blessed week and we will see you next time.